This is the Thank You Ocean Report. Did you know that the waters along the California coast form one of the greatest underwater maritime museums in the country, ranging from submerged culturally and spiritually significant Native American sites to shipwrecks of exploration dating back to 1595? Research suggests that there's over 1,100 ship and aircraft casualties reported just in California's National Marine Sanctuaries. And that encompasses, with the expansion of Gulf of the Fairlawns, nearly 11,000 square miles. Robert Schwemmer is the West Coast Regional Maritime Heritage Coordinator for NOAA's Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. And to date, we've only located about 100 submerged sites. If we look at the bigger picture, the entire waters off California, outside of state waters, we're talking thousands of shipwrecks. And Robert tells me that there are a number of causes for these ship losses, such as human error resulting in collisions, heavy seas, gale force winds, strong currents, uncharted hazards, and fire aboard ships. I would say in the research that I've done throughout the state of California, I think the single largest cause of casualties, to shipping at least, is fog. Imagine what remains undiscovered if only a hundred of these ships have been found. And with new technology such as sonar and 3D imaging, researchers can look much deeper. As an example, Robert and his colleagues made six new shipwreck discoveries in 18 months just off the Greater Fairlawns National Marine Sanctuary. And most of that's due in part because of 3D sonar technology that can be applied to autonomous underwater vehicles. We just explored the city of Rio de Janeiro, known as the Titanic of the Golden Gate. There were 210 on board, 128 lives were lost. These ships are amazing underwater time capsules. They provide maritime archaeologists and historians with a a snapshot of a given day and time. We can learn about technology in that period of time, how the ship was constructed. We learn about the crew or the passengers that once sailed aboard the ships by the personal items left behind in an attempt to abandon the ship or were less fortunate and went down with the ship. But connecting us with the people aboard these ships also connects the public with the ocean. So that they'll have a better understanding not only of the historic shipwrecks we're recording and maybe their connection to those shipwrecks, but also look at these specially protected areas like National Marine Sanctuaries, really grounding the importance of our blue planet and the ocean that we do have to save. And here's an ironic twist of fate. Some of these shipwrecks actually provide habitat for fish and other creatures of the ocean, and there's even more. This is kind of interesting, going back in history, abandoned ships still afloat, although a hazard to navigation, have provided information on ocean currents worldwide in the 19th century. And there are cases where shipwrecks have served as breakwaters. <laughs> One example is here in California, Port Wainimi. The southern breakwater is built on the remains of the steel hull of the ocean-going passenger ship La Janelle. And there are many resources to help us learn more. The Office of National Marine Sanctuaries is really great about getting the word out. We've got a lot of information on our websites. We have shipwreck brochures. We have really great exhibits along the coast and teacher at sea. Now with the capability of Okeanos Explorer, one of our big NOAA research vessels, we now have the opportunity to go live with the public during live explorations. And the combination of all of these resources gives us a great opportunity to learn more about California's maritime history. My thanks to Robert Schwemmer. And here's your Thank You Ocean Everyday Action. Get connected with this underwater museum online and in person. I'm Jerry Kay.